This is a 1966 Zenith model 5430. It uses the 24MC32 chassis and it has the color 21FJP22 CRT. And this is an interesting set as it features what I call the diagonal tuner arrangement. As you can see, the VHF tuner is in the upper left corner and the UHF tuner is in the lower right corner. Centered in the UHF tuner is the on-off volume switch. 1966 is the last year in which Zenith put the color logo on the on-off volume switch. And this is a high-end cabinet. However, the chassis is actually kind of an economy chassis. We'll take a look and see why in just a moment. But first you can see a close-up of the control panel. I have the back cover removed. There's the back cover right here. Still has all the factory labels and tags on it. But here's our 21 FJP uh, 22 CRT. And the reason I consider this a cheaper chassis is because it uses 6BZ6 intermediate frequency amplifiers. All other Zenith chassis use the 6EH7 IF amps and a 6EJ7 third IF amp. Now this set actually has a 6EJ7 third IF amp, but if I'm not mistaken, it is the only color chassis in which Zenith used 6BZ6s. And we have the 6BK4 shunt regulator tube still. We just got the x-ray shield here. There it is. Have the 6JS6 horizontal output tube. And I did a complete electronic restoration of this set back in 05 when I got it. And it had a really bad sound problem. And it was caused by a screwdriver drift. And screwdriver drift is a slang term for some guy that thinks he knows what he's doing. He goes and he starts twiddling coils, not knowing what's going on, and he causes more problems than he had to start with. Only because the 6Z10 tube was shorted. So, he tried adjusting the sound takeoff coil and the quadrature coil, and they were so far out of alignment that there was absolutely no sound at all even with a good strong tube installed. And the set, the chassis was pretty dusty, so I was able to look in the cores of the coils and you could see where the dust was disturbed from the hex stick. And it was pretty easy to adjust, you just adjust sound for best sound quality out of the speaker. You don't need to use a scope or anything. But it works great now.
Direct from our newsroom in Washington, in color, this is the CBS Evening News with Walter Cronkite and Russ Hodge in Memphis, Tennessee, Dan Rather in New York, Bernard Kalb in Saigon, Marvin Kalb in Wellington, New Zealand, and Burke Quint in Quezon, South Vietnam. Good evening. Dr. Martin Luther King, the apostle of nonviolence in the civil rights movement, has been shot to death in Memphis, Tennessee. Police have issued an all-points bulletin for a well-dressed young white man seen running from the scene. Officers also reportedly chased and fired on a radio-equipped car containing two white men. Dr. King was standing on the balcony of a second-floor hotel room tonight when, according to a companion, a shot was fired from across the street. In the friend's words, the bullet exploded in his face. Police, who have been keeping a close watch over the Nobel Peace Prize winner because of Memphis' turbulent racial situation, were on the scene almost immediately. They rushed the 39-year-old Negro leader to a hospital where he died of a bullet wound in the neck. Police said they found a high-powered hunting rifle about a block from the hotel, but it was not immediately identified as the murder weapon. Mayor Henry Loeb has reinstated the dusk-to-dawn curfew he imposed on the city last week when a march led by Dr. King erupted in violence. Governor Buford Ellington has called out 4,000 National Guardsmen. And police report that the murder has touched off sporadic acts of violence in a Negro section of the city. In a nationwide television address, President Johnson expressed the nation's shock. America is shocked and saddened by the brutal slaying tonight of Dr. Martin Luther King. I ask every citizen to reject the blind violence that has struck Dr. King, who lived by nonviolence. Dr. King had returned to Memphis only yesterday, determined to prove that he could lead a peaceful mass march in support of striking sanitation workers, most of whom are Negroes. Dr. King had this to say last night about the situation in Memphis. Maybe I could understand the denial of certain basic First Amendment privileges because they haven't committed themselves to that over that. But somewhere I read of the freedom of assembly, somewhere I read of the freedom of speech, somewhere I read of the freedom of press, somewhere I read that the greatness of America is the right to protest for right. There was shock in Harlem tonight when word of Dr. King's murder reached the nation's largest Negro community. Men, women, and children poured into the streets. They appeared dazed. Many were crying. A young Negro said, Dr. King didn't really have to go back to Memphis. Maybe he wanted to prove something. 